Welcome. This is the Life Habits Podcast Series, and my name is Carl Vredenberg. This is the series that helps you to learn new habits to optimize your life in order to stay sane in this crazy world. This is episode number 58, and the topic for today is authentic listening. Let's get started with some insightful quotes on this topic. The first one is by Ralph Nichols, who says, The most basic of all human needs is the need to understand and be understood. The best way to understand people is to listen to them. M. Scott Peck said, You cannot truly listen to anyone and do anything else at the same time. Michael P. Nichols said, There's a big difference between showing interest and really taking interest. Winston Churchill said, Courage is what it takes to stand up and speak. Courage is also what it takes to sit down and listen. Robert Schuller said, Big egos have little ears. A Turkish proverb goes, If speaking is silver, then listening is gold. Finally, Stephen R. Covey said, Seek first to understand and then to be understood. Some great quotes to get us going on this topic that is central to interpersonal communication, communication with large groups, communication with small groups, essentially all communication, because it's essentially half of the equation of communication, or some would argue even more so because you fundamentally need to understand the other person in order to appropriately communicate what you would like to communicate. This is a part of communication that a lot of people don't provide and focus enough attention on, and that's why we're devoting this particular episode to this topic. I wanted to reflect on an experience that I had many years ago during an internship when the the doctor that was serving as my internship leader was having meetings, you know, with me when we were talking about, you know, issues and planning work. And we also did some research uh, together. And this is a person who embodied the characteristics that we'll be talking about during this episode of authentic listening better than anyone else I've ever experienced. And I've always tried to emulate the skill that that particular doctor had. And we'll get into the details in a minute with the top 10 list, but I just wanted to reinforce what it felt like from the receiving end of the authentic listening. This is a guy that's hugely busy. He was PhD, MD. He ran a whole clinic. He was world famous researcher and had a packed schedule and diary. Yet, when I got together with him, I got the sense that I had all of his time. I had his undivided attention. He focused entirely on what I was saying. And I got a sense that I had been with him to deal thoroughly with whatever issues I had. It felt like I was with him for hours on end, or at least, you know, an hour, when in actual fact, most of the meetings that I had with him were all of about 10 minutes. But they were so appropriately focused that the communication that went on in that 10 minutes was worth more than the communication I had with any number of other meetings, with any number of other people. That took an awful lot longer. So today's session then is to focus on authentic listening. Now, I'm using the term authentic listening rather than a number of the other terms that if you've read at all in this area, you'll be aware of. So we've talked about the term active listening. There's also a whole area of psychology looking at and practicing reflective listening. But in my experience, those systems are too shallow or too formulaic and feel artificial. I think they focus on things. Some of the things we'll be covering here too, but they don't get to the heart and essence of the approach we need to be taking to listening, which is 
being truly genuine and real. And hence the term that I'm using, authentic listening. So what I'll be talking about here is applicable mostly to face-to-face communication, but it's also relevant to conversations you have on the phone or even electronic communication that you may have via email, text, and messaging communication as well. So let's get to the top 10 list. Number one is to pay attention, face the person, maintain eye contact, and regardless of whether you're actually in the same location or not, give your undivided attention. Absolutely focus directly on what the person is going to be saying and ensure that you have the environment set so that you can do that. And that's number two, avoid distractions. Turn off you know, your phone. Don't get distracted by computers with regard to things like instant messaging clients. Make sure you don't get interrupted by coworkers, family members, and also just noisy environments that are distracting. Communication that really needs to be effective needs to be done without any distractions. Now, many of us experience days of dealing with a variety of interactions and a variety of interruptions of those interactions as well, especially with all of the technology we now you know, use on a regular basis. And you know that others have views on the use of those technologies and saying, oh, you should never use those. And I'm not of that view. I truly do believe that there are many instances where using those technologies is a very effective way to go through our days and accomplishing what we need to accomplish in an efficient and effective manner. But there are times when you want to communicate really effectively. And this is, like I say, in person as well as, let's say, on a phone call. In order to do that, you need to not have any distractions. You want to be able to focus directly on what the other person is saying. Number three is to show that you're listening. And the other methods that I mentioned before are the ones that are more sort of artificial, would have all kinds of what in my mind are sort of gimmicks for doing that. But you want to simply give a reinforcement to the other person that you're not only listening, but hearing and understanding what it is that they're saying. So you want to do the, uh uh-huh, yeah, I understand, that kind of reinforcement. And you also want to sort of verbalize, you know, what you're learning as you go. So it's not just the repeating what they've said, which is often the recommendation in the active listening sort of approach, as well as the reflective one. You want to fundamentally play back to the person indications that you are following, you know, what it is that they're saying. Number four is to focus on verbal and nonverbal communication. You want to focus on the emotion as well as the content. You want to look at the entire human being. The person may be saying one thing verbally, And they may be communicating something entirely differently with their tone of voice, with their hesitation, with some level of emotion, some level of discomfort. You've got to pay attention to those nonverbal cues as well in order to fundamentally understand the entire communication coming from the other person. Number five is to defer all judgment. Simply try to learn. There'll be time for providing your own view. But for the moment, when you're in the phase where you really want to understand what it is that they're saying, don't apply any judgment, not even in your own mind. You want to focus all your energies on trying to understand what the other person is saying. Number six related to that is to set aside prejudices and opinions, your own. Simply take the other person's perspective for a while. Try to empathize with them so you really understand what it is that they're communicating. Number seven is to stop your own internal dialogue. Normally, we judge, we essentially quietly to ourselves, speak to ourselves in our mind about what is going on in a communication What I'm saying here is stop that internal dialogue, quiet it down so you can listen, truly listen to what the other person's saying. And also 
stop the other aspect of your in internal dialogue, and that is the anticipation of what you're going to say next. Number of people, and it it's very common to have a conversation with someone else when, while they're still speaking, you're already practicing or thinking about what your response is going to be. What is the effect of that? Well, you're not actually listening fully while you're doing that. You may miss what they're saying. You've already been practicing what it is that you're going to be saying in response. So you may be entirely getting off base and not thinking deeply. So relax. Stop the internal dialogue. Stop your anticipation and planning of what you're going to say next. Instead, just listen and understand. Number eight is to restate or summarize what you're understanding. Don't just repeat it. Do a deep treatment of really playing back and especially toward the sort of tail end of their description of what it is that they wanted to communicate to you. After you've done all the listening and the reinforcement and the short summaries of showing that you understood what it is that they're talking about, you want to now also sort of play back more fully a summary as you understand it of what they have been saying. That also gives you the opportunity to not only show that you understood, but if you didn't understand well enough, it's also the opportunity to then clarify what it is that they've been saying. And they have a chance to say, well, no, that's not exactly what I meant. What I meant is this. Excellent way of getting fundamentally to the essence of what it is that they're trying to communicate. Number nine is to ask questions to explore issues further. You now have understood what they've said. Now you want to drill down a bit in a number of specific areas to understand a little better beyond what they've said thus far. And number 10 is to provide your views if it's at all relevant in the situation. Maybe it's just a matter of hearing and understanding what they have to say. But if the environment is such that you are now expected to or would like to give your sort of summary and your own views, then you can do that now. So once you've spent all the time and the kind of techniques and approaches that I've described in the previous nine items, number 10, you can finally get around to saying, okay, well, now I, I hear you and I understand that this and this and this is what you have been describing to me. And while I understand and agree with, you know, virtually all of it, uh, there are a few areas where I differ. And here's where my view uh, is on those uh, particular topics. And this is how it relates to what you described. And then get into further sort of discussion and exploration of that. But the overall approach here is to understand and then be understood. And the majority of the focus should really be on the understanding. And you may think it's weird that I've spent, you know, nine items focusing on simply the listening part, and then you only have one item that talks about you actually expressing your views. But one of the reasons that I've positioned it this way is that it's a way of swinging the pendulum, if you will. Most of us spend most of our time focusing on what we want to say, planning it, saying it. We don't spend enough time actually trying to understand the other person in the communication. That leads to all kinds of ramifications, usually negative. So in order to swing that pendulum back to the other side, you need to focus for a while on deeply, deeply understanding the other person and really pulling back from the communication of your own views. In fact, I'd like to suggest something that we started the podcast with many, 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 many episodes ago, which was sort of an assignment for the next week. After you hear this episode, I'd like you to spend time this week, choose some specific conversations or meetings that you have coming up, and decide to practice these methods. And in particular, spend your time listening. People will be very surprised. <laughs> It'll be hard to adjust. But you'll see, I think a significant difference in the quality of your communication, a difference in understanding that other person anew in many ways, if you practice the methods that I've described here. So this week, choose one or two specific instances or meetings that you're going to be practicing these methods with, and then 
get some insight into how effective those were, what was different for you, and then honing that experience as well. So that's the topic of authentic listening. Wanted to just, before we finish up, go through a little bit of the feedback that I've received. You know, in iTunes, every once in a while I go in there and see what the overall rankings are for the podcast and the self-help category, and then also look at some of the comments uh, from you, the listeners, in the various countries that this podcast goes to. And it goes to many, many, many countries, and it's in the top 10 list of self-help in terms of ranking of popularity in most countries that have some English-speaking people in them, which is pretty rewarding. And I think you all should feel good about that, as I've said many times before, that this is a partnership. You often propose the topics, you come up with questions, you provide feedback in terms of how to improve the overall approach. And so I think we should share in feeling good about the fact that this podcast is doing as well as it is. And so I wanted to just touch on three bits of feedback and comments that were provided. One is in the UK iTunes store by Mills81, who gives the series five stars and says, this is an excellent series of podcasts on a wide range of topics. The host is very knowledgeable, an excellent presenter, and easy to listen to. The content is rich, varied, and well-researched, yet delivered in a clear and concise way. The podcasts are often thought-provoking and motivate to assess our own lives and make changes by developing new habits. Thank you, Carl, and I'm looking forward to more. Thanks very much, Mills. I really appreciate that bit of feedback from the UK. And way down to Australia, Melb005 says, Five stars, really enjoyable, lots of great suggestions. Great to find an inspirational podcast where the host doesn't have a drive you crazy voice. So thanks very much for that feedback and a little longer feedback from another Australian listener, Terence Jansen, who gives the series five stars and gives it the title, My Digital Mentor. Just want to say that I really enjoy your podcast and find the advice a great source of reflexivity and personal growth. I revisit many of the episodes on career planning, motivation, and public speaking and others on a regular basis and find these help me maintain my sense of perspective as I move through life. I have recommended this podcast to my friends interested in improving themselves and have recommended it to anyone looking at subscribing here on iTunes. And then he gives the best bits and then the areas for improvement. The best bits are good voice, tone, and speed, insightful content, and the tens give a cue to remember the most personally relevant points. A wide range of topics on many aspects of living life. In terms of areas of improvement, these include more special guests, if possible. He's a big fan of the episodes where you have a dialogue with your guest as it brings up further useful insights. Adding a mini segment along the lines of one thing to try for the next month that is related to this topic, and I did try to include that even in this episode again, by the way. And then he says, uh, and quick questions and answer style podcasts, taking a question and giving a five minute response and then moving to the next question that is based on lifestyle topics. Keep up the great work. We love the flow. So the ideas there, Terrence, thanks for, for the feedback, first of all, and the suggestion of getting to a particular assignment for the week. I've already adopted that in this one and intend to do that again. Also love the idea of doing quick, shorter questions from listeners that I can go through a variety of them during a listener questions type of uh, podcast. And so I'd like to ask you all to send me not just topics, those are, you can continue to do those as well that are sort of a full focus for a whole episode, but also just send me particular questions, you know, questions you'd like to have answered with regard to your own life. And you can also, by the way, if you would like to submit a question, but would like to do it anonymously, meaning you don't want me to read, I typically only use your first name when I identify anything that you've sent to me when I actually use it, you know, in the podcast it's, uh, itself. If you'd rather that I not include your name, I can always use a pseudonym. So do let me know that too, if you want to send along some questions in that format. So send along the questions to lifehabits at gmail.com and I'll gather those up. I've already gotten a few from a number of you through the social 
networks as well, but send me your questions there. And please do, please do also keep up the comments and the ratings uh, in iTunes. I wanted to particularly put a request out for people in some of the countries that haven't provided any ratings or comments at all. And the podcast is doing, you know, well and is v- very popular in certain countries that have been part of the podcast for a long time. So, you know, Canada, the US, Australia, United Kingdom, but it's also now quite popular and usually in the top 10 in countries like India and China and South Africa and want to request people that are in those countries to also provide ratings and comments and do send me along emails as well with regard to any questions or any suggested topics that you may have as well. So with that, that's it for this particular episode. Thanks ever so much for all of the feedback, your continued interest in this podcast series, and we'll talk to you all next time and bye for now.